everyone, welcome to example 13. We're gonna look at continuous growth and decay, or more specifically in this example, decay. So we have this substance, radon 222. It decays at a continuous rate of 17.3% per day. How much will 100 milligrams of radon 222 decay to in five days? So before we get into all the math on it, I want you to think you have 100 milligrams of some substance. So imagine you have 100 milligrams of something in your hand and it's decaying, all right? And it's decaying by about 17.3% per day. So if you had 100 milligrams of it, well, the next day you'd have 17% less and then 17% less. And that's not quite true. It's not exactly 17.3 and 17.3 because of this continuous aspect of the decay. But I hope you can get the idea, right? It's decaying. You're going to have less and less and less and less. And we're trying to see, well, how much do you think is left after five days? I don't know. I mean, like just gut feelings if I'm losing 17%. And I'm just going to do a real rough estimate here. If I was going to lose 17% per day, not continuously, but just one time out, if I did 100 times 0.173 and I subtracted that number from 100, I can see at one day I'm going to have about 83 grams left, all right, maybe a little less because of the continuous aspect of it, and then I'm going to lose another 17%, so I'm going to have 82 minus 14-ish, so even two days in, I'm going to be down to closer to 68 milligrams, and I've got to go five days in, so if I continue doing this, I think I'd get closer to like 50 grams. I have a feeling after five days, I'm going to have something like 40 to 50 grams left. It's not going to all be gone. I'll still have some. But let's see if we can look for buzzwords in this problem that help us figure this out. First of all, I see the decay here. And I see continuous. All right, so this is decaying, and it's continuously decaying, which makes me think, well, that could be some kind of exponential decay. Because we talked about continuously compounded money problems, and now we're looking at continuous decay. That's got some kind of exponential aspect to it. And really the giveaway here is that you have a rate of 17.3% per day. So that of is like multiplication, right? And when you're multiplying by a constant each time, that is exponential growth, or more specifically in this case, exponential decay. So if I have exponential decay and it's continuous, I know I'm gonna be governed by the PERT formula. All right, so I just want to put here, we have continuous exponential decay. Okay. And again, whenever you're losing, in this case losing because of the decay, but whenever you're multiplying by a constant to get from one y value to the next, that's exponentially modeled, right? It's when you're adding and subtracting constants that you're linearly modeled. And we talked about that way back in example one. All right, so with that, let's see which of these four letters they gave us and then which letter they're asking us to solve for. So I see my rate here, I see my P here, and I see my T value here. So I think the easier ones to spot are your initial amount. So this is P is 100. I can see right here T is gonna be equal to five. I have R here. Now, I want us to be careful. We might say it's 0.173, and that's close, but really it's negative 1.73 because we're decaying. So when you're talking about continuously decaying um, substances, or at least continuous exponential decay, if it's decay, your R value will be negative. And if it's growth, your R value is going to be positive. And we saw some positive growth when we were doing example 12 with the money. All right, so here we go. I will have A is equal to what, 100 E to the, what was my R? Negative 1.73 times five. So let me head over to my handy dandy calculator here. And I'm gonna clear this out. We've got 100 times E to the negative 0.173 times five. When I plug that in, it looks like I have 42.105. So let me go ahead and write that down. We've got 42.105. This is a word problem, so it'll need some units. And our units in this problem are milligrams. Okay? All right, so with that, that takes us through 
section 6.1, and it's a big one. There's a lot to unpack here. So I hope we're a little bit more comfortable with evaluating exponential functions and then finding the equation of an exponential function, whether you do it by hand or whether you do it with exponential regression on your calculator. And then we picked up a couple of compounding interest formulas. We picked up a compounding interest formula when you gain interest n times a year and then when you gain it continuously. All right, and the one for n times a year had a base of 1 plus r over n, and the continuously compounded interest formula had a base of e. All right, and then we were talking about how to evaluate exponential functions with base e, and we saw that play out with some continuous exponential decay, where previously we've been looking at a lot of exponential growth. All right, so with that, that's going to round out 6.1. We're going to head on to 6.2 and start graphing these functions. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.